The year is 3025, and the inner sphere is at war again for the one, two, three, fourth time, apparently. But all you've got are these gray plastic battle max. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint up your first miniatures and make them look awesome in the process. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. So let's take your mechs from Battletech, a game of armored combat, and give them a 325 retro charm. Welcome to this Battletech painting tutorial. I'm going to go over a few things you need before we get started painting the miniatures. So first and foremost, obviously you need a couple miniatures. In this case, I'm using them from Battletech, a game of armored combat. Which these miniatures are incredible, by the way. You can see my overall view of them in a video link below for my overview of Battletech, a game of armored combat. But you also need two brushes. Now it's important to note that when I talk about brushes, I'm talking about really good brushes. It's worth spending the money on really good brushes. And when I say really good brushes, I'm not talking about $6 things from the art store. I'm talking about $20-ish things from the art store. For the most part, I use Artificer Layer Extra Small brushes. These are Games Workshop's really high-end brushes, and they run about $25 a piece. But trust me, those really good brushes, what they do is their bristles stay together a lot longer. They don't fray nearly as much, and you get a much better painting experience for the life of the brush. Now the second brush you do want to use is called a dry brush. I've got one here from the Armored Painter War Paint series. Now unlike that brush where you want a really expensive brush, the dry brushes, they can kind of be anything. Um, because dry brushes get the crap kicked out of them and the bristles get destroyed anyway in the process. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on this brush, but just the main color brush you do. The other thing you're going to need is a wet palette. This is a way of storing your paints and mixing them and things like that. I'm not going to go over the de whole lot of the details of a wet palette in this video. There's plenty of YouTube videos how to make one of these things. It's really simple. Tupperware container, paper towel, and parchment paper. But they're a great way to kind of thin down your paints and mix things together and keep paints wet longer. As for the individual paints I'm going to be using, I'll be going through that during the painting process, but you do need to think ahead of time what you want your color scheme to be. Now with Battletech, there's all sorts of artwork you can reference for all the different houses, different military units, mercenary companies, whatever. And you can really choose for these mechs a fairly simple color scheme. You're going to have a primary armor color, and then you're going to have a camouflage stripe color. So that's basically two main colors plus some highlights. So maybe if you're not really sure what colors you want to use or you don't want to use something formally from the Battletech universe, a great alternative is to look at sports teams. They've already picked out good matching colors and maybe choose something from a professional sports team or a college team or whatever you may have there. With those details out of the way, let's start with the priming process. Now for the primer, you want to choose a color that's very similar to your base color. In this case, I'm using Dragon Red from the Army Painters War Paint series. And I do like to use my little fancy 3D printed primer tool here. You can find a link to how to purchase that down in the show notes of this video. But it allows me to prime multiple miniatures from multiple angles all at once. And for applying the primer, what you do want to do is put a whole bunch of thin coats on one after another. You do not want to apply thick coats of primer as that will possibly ruin details. With the primer dry, it's time to bring out some of the details by increasing the contrast in the miniature. And for this step, we're going to be using some sort of wash that's a dark color, but in the same hue range as your base color. So in this case, I am working with Serap and Sepia from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. Coat the entire miniature in this color and don't be afraid to apply it pretty heavily on the miniature. Make sure the wash does get in all the details though. Once the wash is completely coated over the miniature, it's gonna take some time for it to dry. So let it go for a little few minutes and you can come back and we can work on the next step once things are ready to go. Most of the wash is looking dry. There are still a few patches here and there, but that's not necessarily a bad thing at this point. That's just gonna help kind of add a little bit to the grunge factor of the mech, which for a mech that's been around for hundreds of years and several succession wars, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's start painting the main color of this miniature. And what you're gonna need are two colors, your base color and your highlight color. So for my base color, which is the darker color that's gonna be the majority of the mech, for mine, I am choosing Mephiston Red from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And just by the fact this is a base color doesn't mean you have to choose this particular line of paints. Any kind of darkish color will work fine for this process. Then for a highlight color, you want something that's a similar hue, but just a little bit brighter. 
So I've got Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. It's a little bit of a brighter red color. First things first, we want to put a fair amount of each of these paints on our wet palette. And this is where the wet palette thing becomes very important because you need to have these paints be around for a while and not dry out. Now we just got to think a little bit about what color everything's going to be. Most of the mech is going to be your base colors, but things that are more mechanical, like say the elbow joints, the back of the knee, the back of the ankle, the weapon, as well as maybe the backpack in this case, oh, and jump jets too, those are probably going to be gray or silver. So everything other than that, what you're going to do is go panel by panel and follow this process. Take a little bit of the highlight color and paint around the edges of the panel. Try not to get the paint in the recesses. If it happens, it happens, oh well, like that. Then without cleaning your brush, take a little bit of the base color and then fill in the middle and start blending the two colors together. If it's going, if the paint looks a little thick, you can always take a small amount of water and then add that to the mix as well. What you're really going for is a very subtle change of color. You don't really want to see noticeable areas of color, just kind of subtle changes from the center to the outside. And now you're pretty much going to do this across the entire mech and all the armor panels. It's an easy process with some basic brush control, but you know, it's not a fast process. On some of the really small armor panels, do your best to kind of keep the brighter color to the outside and the base color to the inside. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? But the, the key trick here is that I'm not washing my brush between colors, so you're getting a nice mixture. So let's look at this perspective from my wet palette side of things. So I'm going to take some of the highlight color, just kind of rub it into the palette like that. That adds a little bit of water to the mix. But you know, I'll highlight the edge of the armor panel. I'll immediately go back in, take some of the base color, spread that on the wet panel to add a little bit of water into it. And then I go back and I paint the middle of the panel on my miniature. You do want to work armor panel by armor panel. It's important that the paint that you have on the armor panel doesn't dry. Otherwise the blending process won't go quite as smoothly as you would like. And every so often, and once you do a couple armor panels, you do need to clean the brush off just to kind of limit the amount of paint that is building up. But for the most part, I just brought, I kind of run my um, brush on the wet palette a little bit and that kind of cleans off some of the paint. Also, if you notice any of the bristles on your brush fraying, what you want to do is twirl the brush as you run it through the paint, or that'll help bring all the bristles back together in one neat clump. And if you do get a little bit of paint in the crevices, what you can do is clean your brush off and very carefully brush it within the crevices and you should be able to pull out some of the paint that you accidentally got in there. All right, let's go to speed mode here and just paint up the rest of this miniature. I'm going to say that I've got all the armor panels done. It looks good enough to me. Most of them are, you know, in place, whatnot. Let's move on to working on the metallic parts. And this is going to be a three-step process. The first step is to use a gray. In this case, I'm using Dawnstone Gray from Games Workshop, Citadel line of paints. And I'm going to coat all the areas that are going to be metal in this gray. And I'm going to put some of that on the wet palette, thin it down a bit, and start covering the areas. Things that I'm looking for are going to be actuators like the hands here, for example. Also elbows like here, backs of knees and the ankles. For this mech, I'm gonna paint his backpack looking thing silver. Jump jets are gonna be silver as well. And can't forget the main weapons, at least the guns that are on the thing, so missiles, I usually don't paint silver, but in this case, like the this big PPC, or we know, this is a Shadowhawk. This is an Auto Cannon 5. And then I think he's also got a couple lasers on his arms. I'll paint those silver as well. Or if you have any other interesting mechanical or electronic or maybe heat sink looking things, 
feel free to paint those gray as well. Once the first layer is dried, if you've noticed you didn't put the gray on thick enough, put another thin coat on before you move along to the next step. It is important when applying the second layer that you do wait for the first layer to dry. If you apply a thin layer on top of another thin layer that's not dried, you end up just kind of making one big thin layer, pushing paint around, and you don't really get any extra coverage. Also, keep an eye out for areas you might have missed. So for example, with the shadow rock here, I should have painted the front of the knees as well. It's very easy to slop a little bit during this process, so if you do, don't freak out just quite yet. We'll fix it in a little bit. So that's looking pretty good for the gray base color. Now we're gonna add some shine to these pieces with some metal color. I'm gonna be using Lead Belcher from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And when applying this paint color, what you wanna do is strike a balance between the flat gray and the shiny metal. Exactly what that balance is, is really up to you. The more shiny metal kind of implies a newer, less tarnished mech, where the less amount of it applies a little bit more of a worn down mech. And what can be helpful is to only use a tiny bit amount on your brush at a time, just like, just the very tip of the brush like that. And that way you can control how much of the shiny metal you actually put on the mech. And even on the surfaces where I'm putting the shiny color, I'm not trying to get full coverage. You want some, at least some of that dull gray to be showing through. So there's one more step for the metallic components, and that's to increase some contrast. And that means once again, we're gonna be using some shade. This is the one part in this process that helps have a very specific color. In this case, it is a Citadel Shade Non-Oil Gloss. The key thing here is this gloss version. While it will darken the miniature and bring out some of the details, it's also going to leave a metallic sheen with its gloss finish. So apply this particular shade all over the metal parts on your battle mech. While that is drying, we can work on our screw-ups. So for all the areas where you accidentally got a little bit of silver or gray you didn't want to, just take some of the red highlight color, or whatever your highlight color was for your armor, and cover up those areas. The next, we want to add some other cool effects to the mech, like some camouflage stripes. So you want to choose a kind of complementary color to your base color. And you need, once again, a kind of a darker version and a lighter version of that color. So for this mech, I'm going to be using some paints from the Army Painter War Paint series. Oak Brown is going to be my dark color base, and Leather Brown is going to be the lighter highlight color of the camouflage stripes. So let's start with the Oak Brown, put some of that down in your wet palette, and paint a few cool looking, just kind of freeform stripes all over the mech. You don't need to go crazy, so maybe 10 or so will do. If you want, you could put a lot more, but I'm gonna limit it to those. And then as they start to dry, I wanna put some of the highlight color over them, but you wanna put a little bit less of the highlight color so you can still see the darker base color on the edges of the stripes. All right, we're getting really close to being finished. We're gonna put a little bit more wear on the mech, and paint the cockpit, and give it a base. Now for the wear, I'm gonna be bringing out a different brush. This is where I'm gonna be using the dry brush. In this case, I've got an Army Painter small dry brush. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't even have to be a dry brush. You just don't wanna use a nice, expensive brush for this step. Dry brushing, what we're gonna be doing here, is brutally destructive on brushes, and it will destroy even expensive brushes, like the ones I'm recommending to use for the rest of the painting process. So, we're going to take some silver paint, whatever color you're using. In this case, I'm going back to my Lead Belcher from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. You put a very small amount of it on the tip of the bristles, wipe most of it off, and then I'm going to very carefully just paint the brush around some edges of the armor in just a few kind of random places. And what this is going to do, it's going to put a little bit of like metallic color to some of the edges of the armor plates. This is going to simulate some of the paint is chipped off and you can see the metallic plating underneath the paint. Now let's go back to working with our really nice brush and I'm going to be painting the few panels of the cockpit. For these mechs and for a lot of mechs, I like to paint them pure black just because that looks awesome, but it's really up to you what you want to do. Do you get some paint outside of the canopy? Just let it dry 
go back over and cover it up with the armor panel color like you did earlier with any of your mistakes from the silver mechanical structure. In order to call this mech complete, we need to apply some basing or some flocking. I'm gonna take them off my little holder. And for this guy, I'm just gonna do a very simple basing job. We're gonna start with some of the brown paint I used for the um, armor stripes. I'm gonna paint the entire base brown. Now, if you get a little bit of paint or whatever your ground color is, if you get a little bit on the feet or even the legs of the mech, that's not a big deal. It's mud, dirt, whatever, and it can splash up very easily on the feet of the battle mechs. Okay, let's let that go for a few minutes, allow it to dry, and we'll move on to the next step. Now that the brown paint is dried, we're gonna apply some PVA glue, which is more or less your typical white glue as you would find, say, in you know, any store pretty much. Cover most, but not all, of the brown paint with this white glue. And then using your flocking of choice, apply some of that to the white glue, let it dry, shake off the excess, and you're good to go there. So for applying the actual flocking, I just got some railroad flocking down in the bottom of a little yogurt container. I'm just gonna take my mech, put it down in there, swirl it around a little bit, pull it out, shake off the excess, and hopefully, wherever there was glue, or in this same case, wet paint, you're gonna have some flocking attached to it. The last little bit we're gonna do here is clean up the sides of the hex base. For five of the sides, I wanna paint them solid black, because I think that looks nice, but it's your choice, whatever color you would like to use. And then for the final side, you wanna make sure you indicate what is the front of the battle mech. That front face, instead of being black, is gonna be painted a solid color. Ideally, the base color used for the armor, but once again, it's up to you. Well, thank you guys all for watching this Battletech painting tutorial. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. So go ahead here and hit that subscribe button, wherever it's living on the screen, wherever you're watching, to get the latest videos. And also, you gotta hit that bell notification too to get those videos. So whether I'm talking about fictional robotic combat or real robotic combat, do, 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 run off camera for a moment and sneak back on, you'll get those videos as well. So until next week, thanks for watching and have a great week.